no, it, it is. But I, 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 again, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't try and stand here to um, to uh, mitigate the significance of it because it is. But in terms of that location there, it is. It does not cause internal property flooding. No. And a lot of the funding, if not most of the funding at the moment, is directed towards numbers that suffer internal property funding. But that's not to say we as a council and as a, as a flood risk partnership should look at the impact on businesses, travel, etc., etc. But when you when you start trying to influence work programmes of, 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 you know, it, of what are significant civil engineering costs, it, it, it's, it's a hard one and that the system weights it towards domestic internal flooding. Centre Forum, uh, and that is a, a collection of services and projects that includes uh, our good Birkenhead constituency manager here, uh, the police, the business uh, improvement development teams, town centre hosts, the, the licensing team, environmental health, trading standards, the ASBO team, the regeneration team, the Wood Waste Recovery Substance Misuse team, the ARC, the YMCA. Uh, and Cheshire Wood Partnerships uh, Homelessness Nurses. So you can see from that it's quite a collection of people, uh, quite a comprehensive range of people. Um, so we've got this group together. Um, a catalyst for this was a report that came in to us uh, from the uh, Shop Mobility uh, Project in the centre of Birkenhead, uh, in, in the area, I think you know, the area by the car parks at the back of b &M. And in the summertime, they, were, had, they reported a couple of occasions where there was a large collection of uh, people on the street drinking um, and being quite uh, agitated, threatening in the behaviour, <coughs> not overtly aggressive, but were behaving in a way that was intimidating to people, uh, to the point where the staff felt uneasy about going out, and this was obviously affecting shoppers in the vicinity. So that was the catalyst. We're hearing about those incidents got us to get this group together. Uh, and, and obviously the starting point was to look at how, what can we do about addressing that, uh, that problem. Well, the magic ingredient was to get people to all talk together, bringing all those services together. Um, you'd think that all these people would know each other, but they didn't. So the first time that some of the people knew of the existence of other projects was when we first got them all in the room together. Uh, and as, as a consequence of that, understandably, people started to talk to each other, shared experience, shared their knowledge and information, and action started to get taken against that group. Now, I'm, I'm not pretending that, that that problem has been eradicated completely, but certainly haven't had any subsequent reports uh, of such concern from, from shop mobility. Now, it's an ongoing uh, situation. I think having got the group together to deal with that particular problem, we've kept it going. It's met four times since, um, and it's a continuing look at, at street drinkers around the town centre, what we can do about them. What we've got is a combination of a very juicy carrot in the sense that we've got some really good treatment services and supportive interventions, and then we've also got the police getting involved as well, and the police bringing if, if, if they, they, and the antisocial behaviour team, very importantly, the antisocial behaviour team. So there's the um, option that if you don't behaviour continues in this way, then you're going to have to uh, deal with the, the law enforcement agency. And in one particular occasion, that's been very effective, where one person was identified as a, a sort of leader, a gang leader, a, a gang of youths that were causing a fair amount of uh, unease and distress. This person was identified, the antisocial behaviour team took action. Um, he did that up in court, and as a consequence, 
relevant to that, though. He's, he seemed to have a bit of a light on the road to Damascus moment and has subsequently engaged uh, very productively with the Whitechapel project and with the treatment services. And he seems to have <coughs> decided that it was not time for him to change his, his behaviour. As a consequence of him changing his behaviour, that seems to have rippled out and affected the group of people that he was a bit of a ring, ringleader for. So there seems to have been a reduction in problems from that. And this seems to have arisen from a, a concerted and coordinated and collective approach of those different services to addressing the problems being presented by that particular person. Um, so as I say, as well as dealing with the problems as they're, they're arising, some really good work has been going on to reduce the, uh, address the causes of those problems. One example of that is the Reducing the Strength campaign, which I imagine well, some of you might have heard about. And that's a, a scheme where uh, retailers, off-sell uh, licensed <laughs> retailers of alcohol, are invited or, to join a scheme where they agree not to sell super strength lager and cider above 6.5%. Nearly all the retailers in the central Birkenhead have now signed up to that scheme and agreed to do it. So that's taken, very largely taken, the supply of, which is a pernicious substance really, uh, off, away from people that drink. And that's not going to say they're going to stop drinking, but instead of drinking stuff of a really high strength, very toxic, they're drinking uh, alcohol of a lower, significantly lower alcohol content. So the alcohol intake is going to be less. Um, our, some of our drinkers are actually grateful for that intervention because it introduces some control that they don't have themselves. So we, we've got that going on, as I say, around, completely around the centre of Birkenhead and it, that's rippled out now and it's happening in other areas. Following on from that has been uh, an additional scheme called the Custodian Scheme the retailers that have signed up for reducing the strength have now, several of them have agreed to be custodians. That means that they've become a point of referral into the treatment services. So from some of the customers that they still have buying alcohol there, if they're, if they're thinking that this person is, I think this person's got some difficulties with alcohol, uh, they are now offering that person information and suggesting that they might be referred to an alcohol service. And Last I heard, there three or four people have actually been referred in. That's in a relatively short time. To do that, they've received training and they get support from the alcohol, the specialist alcohol service. So we've now got shopkeepers, alcohol re retailers, being a point of access into, into the structured treatment services. So I think that's a real move forward and a good sign of responsible retailing as well, which is, is what's going on. Um, in addition to that, the, the group has very practically identified locations where people have been drinking and using drugs. Uh, and these, some of these sort of hidden away back alleys, back entries, secret corners, uh, were really polluted with litter. The, the obvious and apparent paraphernalia uh, from drinking, which is empty bottles, empty cans, um, paraphernalia for drug use, you know, very unpleasant injecting equipment, and generally pretty mucky, dirty corners. Now, the the teams involved have sort of come together, the YMCA, the Town Centre Host, the Town Centre Outreach, uh, I think, I think uh, McDonald's are actually participating to some extent, and clean-ups taking place. They've gone out and actually cleaned up the dirty alleyways themselves and got bags and bags of litter. And there have been some really impressive before and after photograph shops collected, which we're intending to use to show to people that are not quite convinced there is a value in signing up to some of these schemes what the value is. This is this is the consequence of the retail of all these products. This is what we find out in the back entries. And you know, this, is, this is the message that we're finding around the place. Um, and that, I think that, that photographic evidence has been presented to people on a couple of occasions and it has actually uh, jogged them into reconsidering their position. So there's been that practical action taken. Um, what's also been looking at alley gates and I know a couple of the town centre retailers have taken a bit more responsibility about making the rear of their premises less accessible, more secure for their, for their business but also less accessible to people that might be using it for a drink and things. So what's been happening is the various teams and projects involved have been generally going around giving consistent messages to the businesses. <coughs> We've had a combination of uh, trading standards and environmental health talking to them about reducing the strength, we have the police talking to them, we have the town
town centre house. And then we get some very strong evidence provided by the treatment services who are passing on the consequences of some of this problematic drinking to the people that are doing it. So it's been a very uplifting um, four meetings to be part of because it, I think it's actually given the people a sense that they, if they take their action in a concerted, coordinated and very focused way, they can make tangible difference. I think it's sort of given people a morale, given people a bit of a spring in the step, that they're, they're, they're bringing about change. Uh, there's the beginnings of change in, in, in the town centre area. Uh, so I thought it was worth coming to let you know about it. And also, actually, one of the ideas that they still want to develop is there, there is begging in the town centre. It seems to be increasing. The information that comes in is a lot of the time the people that are begging are not homeless but they see begging as a means to, it's, it's recognised, but they've got the begging, uh, the begging kit in some cases. Uh, but it's a means of, it, they're using it to buy alcohol and drugs. Uh, and that's not like a myth, that's because I know that information's coming to me from the, the outreach teams who know the individuals and who know that they're not homeless and who know that they're acting in a particular way. So one of the things, that one of the actions that we'd like to follow up through, through that forum is some sort of public <coughs> awareness public encouragement to um, desist from giving to beggars, uh, be aware of the services that are there helping um, homeless and people with drinking, severe drinking problems, encourage people, you know, rather than give to beggars, if you want to engage with them, encourage them to take up the services that, uh, that are available. So to have, so I think there's a campaign in Liverpool that is, is already underway, and uh, I know Sarah from the Town Centre Host has spoken to them about their campaign. They'd be very willing to share it with us and for us to adapt it locally, but to have some sort of fairly concerted campaign to inform the public about the situation and persuade them to, or encourage them not to, I mean, in, in a Christian way they're probably making that with the, with the best will, but it actually is, a, is an unproductive act because it is instead providing for primarily alcohol but also drugs, and that is making the situation of people worse. So So that's the project I wanted to tell you about. That's the work they've been doing. I think all the partners have got very actively engaged. Um, I think all, all partners are seeing the benefit of that. And, um, we, we have a continuing plan to keep plugging away at those issues in the town centre. Thank you, Mary. Thank you very much indeed. And as to take part in this at all, then. As they don't sell. They've actually got an increase of 
street drinkers stealing yeah. and then selling the drugs and then coming back and buying some yeah. spent alcohol. So they've been made aware of that and we are working with them to try and reduce that and either get them on board so that they don't sell it or to stay <coughs> out of the street drinkers. And it's, it is a working rule that the, the, the small companies manage, it's the very big companies Some of the feedback we've had from the, the businesses that got involved has been very positive. That they're after an initial drop in taking, yeah. uh, they're, they're seeing benefits coming to that because they're not having to deal with people coming in very drunk, yeah. uh, being abusive. Yeah. Other people are more comfortable coming into the shop. Generally, it's just a, yeah. a more pleasant retail environment. Notify all the people involved in this forum that you'll be open. As long as I know when you're open, mm. I'll make them aware. It's, and it's a one—it's a one-off in response. Can I just take a minute? It's a these, one these are a one-off. Yeah. It's directly in response to the report of young people targeting street drinkers. Yeah. We know that we get an increase in antisocial behaviour over the Bank Communion, which is the Halloween mm. which is night and bonfire night. Mm. And what we didn't want was for those young, young people or probably them in the morning time to commit AFP to then go and target. We know historically there's been some unpleasant consequences in there, yeah, but we didn't want that again. Danny said this, but we have, we have told them, the CSOs have been out, but sadly I think they may be intoxicated and not necessarily taking it. Well, it is, they've got a data, there's a daytime provision in the Child Comp Commission and the Child yeah. Comp Army, but we knew that there was a gap in the evenings and, and we very much wanted to stop that, which is why. We also make the YMCA aware, and they, yeah. they should be. My understanding is, I'll check. I'll, with Danny. I'll prompt them tomorrow, and <coughs> the town centre outreach team and the child's Some Thompson mission. Yeah, yeah and yeah. That, that I'm sure I, I would thought be surprised that, that wasn't morning, taken up. Yeah. 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 I was going to say about Charles Thompson's Bernie Frost. He'll actually speak to the people, oh. and he'll direct them through yeah. to you.
very negative perception. As soon as you mentioned the word Birkenhead, people feel that. It was fantastic to be there and have so many people from Birkenhead actually there. And to hear the name Birkenhead mentioned so many times when the awards were being handed out to all in all, I think it was a fantastic day. And it just shows you that even in you know days of austerity and everything, it's fantastic what can be done with so many people who are committed and enthusiastic to build up the place. And all in all, it was just a fantastic day and it's been just a pleasure to be there. So
those nervousness because not all of them are being accessed. So there's a pilot uh, task group set up in each area looking at how they can um, facilitate, make that bridge so more residents take up services. Uh, so St so James is very, very involved, Gorby Road, um, the Beachwood Big Local Partnership and Seacombe looking at doing activities from the community centre there and also involving St Paul's. Uh, so it's a little bit, bit wider. But I know Mike's been to uh, one of the meetings because um, Mike's looking at doing sports development with food elements. It's a project that our, one of our funders, Street Games, are involved with. It recognises the fact that youngsters who are on uh, free school meals, what happens during the holiday periods. So we're trying to combine the food, obviously, with the activity. And when, you know, if you think about yourself, the food obviously is the energy that allows you to run around and function well. But if you're only like me, you know, you're missing out your meal time or something, you also start to get a mood change. And you become agitated and a bit angry, and that happens with the youngsters as well. So really want to put the two together, and it's pretty obvious when you start to think about it. So at the moment, we've got our mobile sports unit that goes out in the evening. We'd like to be able to put a tow bar on the back and take a potato van with us as well, <laughs> so we can serve jacket potatoes with fillings, it's nice and easy, it's cheap. And for a pound a head, in effect, you're getting a very nutritional meal, whether it's beans on top or cheese on top, something simple. So we're working that up at the moment, <coughs> trying to roll it out. We're looking for funding for from Street Games for Easter next year and the summer holidays. Two areas, Bidston, St. James, working out of the tennis centre, <coughs> possibly the Beechwood as well. Um, <coughs> down to Rock Ferry, Tranmere. So it's in the melting pot as we speak, but I've got to get that in before Christmas. So look out for that one. But definitely got to work in partnership to hear the good work that's going on. about national citizenship. What we want to do is to engage young people across the 60 to 17 year olds and bring them in to the actual constituency meetings. And I was going to ask, is there any chance that we could actually have a spot for them within the meeting where they can ask questions uh, to engage with them and bring them in? We did try it last week. We went into the council chambers last week, last Friday. Over at the I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a great day, didn't we, Chris? Exactly. And it was very positive it was with the young people. I mean, they did ask the questions, Great. which actually affect them. 
whether we've got schooling, about what's happening with the constituency, whether the boundaries. So from that, they have said they want to be part of it and be more coming into it as well. So we were just asking, is there any chance that we could do this and bring the young people in? Just after we'd submitted that, we uh, heard that 